everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. I uh, have been receiving quite a few questions on some of the items that I'm wearing out there to be able to fish during the winter time here in Texas. So that's what I've got right here for y'all today. Uh, we're very fortunate enough to have mild winters, so to say. Temperatures rarely go into the 30s, but when they do, it brings along with it some very nasty rain, high winds, and uh, you just want to be able to take comfort in knowing that when you go out there on the water and one of these fronts are pushing through or the rains are going to start kicking up, uh, you need to take comfort in knowing that your clothing that you decided to go out there with is going to get the job done. So let's go over what I'm using uh, through the course of four seasons now. I have come to rely heavily on these items that I'm going to show you and uh, hopefully it'll give you a better idea of what it is that you can go out there with and be able to withstand around five to six hours of fishing whenever the temperature does get nasty. We first start off with a base layer. This is a heavyweight tight right here that has Omni heat technology, I think is what Columbia calls it. Uh, this stuff does wear out. This is one of my newer pants, so you can see by the reflectiveness that it's got right there that uh, it's fairly new. But this right here is a man made fiber. Actually, everything that I'm going to show you is man made uh, fibers. You want to stay away from things like cottons, stuff that absorbs moisture and it does not dry unless the sun is out beating down on you. And let's face it, that's not what we have here in Texas by way of uh, wintertime weather. So this is what I'm gonna start out with. And uh, it still allows you, it conforms to the body, but it's not very restricting. And uh, it allows you full dexterity. As a matter of fact, everything that I'm gonna show you allows me to move freely whenever I'm on the kayak. Because if I did not have that and I felt like a stay puffed man, it's just gonna be a bad day on the water. So just keep that in mind as I show you all these items. So we start off with a base layer bottom. And then I'm gonna have a base layer sock. This is something that's very simple. It's no more than like a cheap uh, set of Walmart socks. You can get them like six bucks for three pairs. And uh, it's like a nylon polyester with spandex, something like that. And uh, I just put that on my feet to start out with. And then we go over to the waterproof stuff. This right here is Randy Sun socks. And uh, I like them because they keep my feet dry. However, what I dislike about them is that they're so tight, very restricting on the feet. Um, when you get them on, uh, you're good because it doesn't really bother me that much. But putting them on and taking them off, that's why it's so tough. And it's the main reason why I'm wearing this right here because I have found that my feet will get nice and toasty, start to sweat, and it's like a suction cup whenever you're trying to pull these darn things off. This allows the sock to release from my feet a lot faster. And uh, the only other thing that I dislike about them is they're very expensive for just one pair. And if you have eagle talons for toenails, it will puncture through the middle membrane that's waterproof. So there's three layers. You got the outer layer of material, the waterproof membrane, and then an uh, inner layer of material. And if you puncture that, well then you may as well toss them away and go to Amazon and purchase a new pair. But this right here, uh, I guess the alternative would be like thick wool socks, and that can be rather expensive as well but not waterproof. So when you're kayak fishing, you got to get into the water whenever you're launching. Wool socks, yeah, they'll keep you warm, um, but uh, they're not gonna keep your feet completely 100% dry until they dry off after you've launched or recovered your kayak. So that's why I go this route right here. Next thing we go to is uh, building on top of the layers. This is my pant, very heavyweight hiking pant right here, also from Columbia. And uh, it's done the job for I think two years already. This is now maybe the third season that I'm now using these. Uh, very effective and it does have that Omni Heat technology. Uh, it's, it's a real heavyweight pant designed for hiking. And uh, a lot of the gear that I use isn't per se for fishing. Uh, I don't care if it says like, hey, this is a golfing shirt. As long as it's gonna provide me with what it is that I need, 
to stay warm out there, I'm all for it. And uh, they're very thin. They are like a modern fit. Uh, you don't have to go with the huge bibs that most of the boaters wear or um, go the route of like, uh, what is it, waders. You don't necessarily have to go through all of that. I mean, y'all have seen me, for those of you who are, who are dedicated viewers of the channel, you've seen me sport these pants whenever the winter rolls around and a lot of the items that I am using. Uh, next, we go up to the tops. This is my base layer top that I'm going to wear. It's just a simple, plain, heavyweight, man-made shirt right here. Um, long sleeve and uh, nothing special about it. Doesn't sport any special technology. Uh, it's just a base layer that I throw on. And then on top of that, you're going to see me with a golf style shirt. Uh, this does sport that Omni Heat technology right there, but it's already worn out. So I think you get maybe 30 washes and then that's gonna start breaking down. And, uh, but the shirt, it's stylish. Uh, again, dual purpose, designed for golfing. Uh, long sleeve, so it gives me two layers on my tops and uh, it allows me to be able to not have that wind start cutting through my tops and chilling my body. On top of that, we have the outer layer, which is nothing more than a uh, insulated jacket. Uh, you can tell that this guy has seen better days. All of that technology in the foil has already just like completely washed away. But uh, the jacket is still good. It's filled with polyester, I want to say, and it definitely does its job in keeping you warm. So this paired with the other two tops, I'm nice and toasty whenever I get out there on the water. Now, if you're expecting rain in the forecast, 30, 40%, and you still decide to go out there, then you're gonna want to wear something by way of a rain jacket or, or rain suit. And this is for my bottoms. These were designed, uh, they're Sims fishing pants. They're, they're designed for hot and humid weather. So again, another dual purpose item that I don't just wait till winter time rolls around. Um, these pants will keep me dry whenever it's drizzling or if, you know, I get caught in a rainstorm or a rain uh, pour that comes down on me whenever I'm out there. Um, I will wear these. Uh, they don't provide any warmth whatsoever. They're very thin. It just helps to keep me dry and that's what a good rain pant will do for you. And then, the partner to that is the matching jacket. Again, same thing that I described over on the pant side, you get with a jacket and uh, it's just a shell to keep you dry. And y'all have seen me during the foul weather uh, wear this right here and it definitely does its job. You will pay for what you get as far as quality and use is concerned. Sims is a phenomenal company and uh, that's what I'm mainly wearing. And then finally, last but not least, I finish off with, th this is a sun gator uh, designed primarily to keep your face shielded from the sun. And uh, what I find that it allows me during the winter time is not getting sunburnt or windburnt. Whenever the winds are very high, this thing I can put it on and uh, take a little bit of comfort in removing the sting from the high winds constantly hitting my face. But that right there is what I'm going out there with. I hope this helps some of y'all to understand what it is that I am doing whenever you see me fishing through the winter. And uh, it's not the perfect solution, but it is my solution. And it's worked for the past four years. We're in season five now. I hope y'all are enjoying the content. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching, and until next time, tight lines.